Hi everyone, this is mine and Ellis's January to March roundup. So the first three months of the year, we are basically just going to be talking about which books we have read so far and what we thought about them. So I have my notes on my iPad for my Goodreads and these are the books I have read so far this year. Let's start with number one. This is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. It follows like a group of, I think is five, it's four friends. Um, who basically live in a retirement village they're all like elderly people but they still have a lot of spirit in them it kind of like plays with the theme of like young at heart they still have a lot going for them they're still really interesting people and that's probably the thing i like most about this book is seeing the friendship dynamics between them and how it kind of like comes across like the stereotype of like thinking all people are boring and they're all like they just do nothing because these people are so interesting and i love how it shows you bits of their past and stuff and you get to know them like Elizabeth, she's meant to be like this really like outgoing, um, strong, independent woman. And it shows you that like she's still like that in her old age, which I find really cool. And then, so that's the thing I like most. The actual plot of this is that there's like been a murder and these four friends decide to investigate it in their retirement village. So I thought that'd be really good because I love thrillers, but it's kind of... I thought it was slightly boring, like the interactions between the characters were nice but I thought the actual murder plot wasn't very well done. I thought it was a bit boring and I thought that um, it got a bit confusing because they introduced one murder and then they introduced another murder and I feel like they focus more on the second murder so you never really, well you did find out what happened with the original one but it was kind of like swept over. I didn't think that was like as well done, however for the characters and like the world that they're in I think that was cool but just not the actual murder plot. I think I gave this four stars because it's still a murder and I still love crime so any crime but to me is always gonna be pretty good apart from Verity although I did give that a three. So good characters I love how they interact with each other. I can't really remember it because it was the first book I read in the year and I don't think it was that memorable I think that's one thing I would say. I remember that I liked um, the characters as I've said but I remember that I don't remember much to do with the murder who did it I don't know who did it I don't know the ins and outs of it I just know the name of the person that was murdered really I couldn't tell you anything about it so I think that was one of like its biggest downfall they needed to like focus more on like getting a good murder plot as well as the characters but overall four stars it's pretty good next book is Heartstopper volume five Ellis actually got this for me. I think it was because it helped him get free delivery on an Amazon order. So he bought this for me and he gave me a little bow, which I've kept on because it's so cute. I mean, how can you go wrong with this? It's just like a cutesy romance, genuine, sweet. Um, the drawings, as usual, are really pretty, really cool. And I love reading these comic books because they give you such a break from like more like strenuous reads with like lots of words, long pages, chapters. And they just give you such a nice like happy bubble to like be in for a bit in between um i think i gave it four stars for me personally no heartstopper book is ever going to get five because for them to get five stars it has to have like a profound impact on me kind of well that's not necessarily true but like most of the time they have to have like a proper like long lasting impact but you can't go wrong with it i mean it's just sweet and genuine and just perfect little romance it's a bit cringy but it's meant to be and i'm so excited for volume five because i want to know how they get on when they're separated and i think alice will do a really good job of showing like even though it's like a hard thing to be like long distance you can still make it work and pull it off and i think she'll do that really well so i'm really excited through the next one but yeah hearts of volume five four stars really good next i reread my favorite um the song of achilles i reread it because I wanted to annotate it properly. If you can see here, the different coloured tabs, the red ones are the ones I put in the first time I read it and the blue ones are all the ones that I've added since when I read it the second time. And basically all I was doing was like writing stuff on it. Don't think my annotations are all like, like analysing it because they're not. For example, here, this is literally me outlining my tears on the paper because I cried at this bit. Sorry if that was a spoiler, just don't read it, it's, it's fine. But this will always have five stars for me. If you want to know more about it, then watch our first video on the channel because we talk about it in there because it's like one of our, both of our favourite books. But I just put like, it has the best quotes of anything I've ever read, the writing is beautiful, 
um, because it is Madeleine Miller has such a or Madeline, as I was to say, has such a good way with words. She creates these really beautiful passages and like she has ways of describing simple things that make them seem so beautiful and like it makes you appreciate like little things, which I think is really, really cool. The ending and throughout it, to be fair, had me crying. I was just staring at the wall. It's one of those things where you finish it and you just like, like you just feel like kind of empty. I really like the poetic nature as well. That's one thing because I do like a bit of poetry and I think this kind of brings like a bit of prose into it, which I really like as well. And there's so much emotion in both the characters. Like they are so multi-dimensional. They're not just one thing. So read my favourite. Last book from January um, is A Course of Fallen Roses, Akatar, the first one in the series. I'm actually planning to read the second one after I've finished my current read while I'm on holiday, so that'll be fun. Came into this with kind of low expectations. I know it has lots of mixed reviews. I've seen people who love it and love the series and people who think it's just like completely crazy and weird and stupid. Kind of liked it more than I was expecting. It was pretty just like easy to follow, easy to get into. Um, characters were sometimes a bit odd. Um, far too many mentions of Tamlin purring, which was interesting, don't approve. But overall, to be fair, it was quite go good. And I'm looking forward to the rest. It was, let me see what I've put on here. I said I'd rate it 3.5, although good read, like please update. I want to be able to do 0.5 stars. Oh, one thing that annoyed the hell out of me in this is that she uses so many ellipses and dashes. It's like honestly insane. It was grating on me. It gets better throughout, but at the start, I'm not even joking. If I just open this page right now, how many is that? That's five dashes on one singular page. <sighs> it gets really annoying. And then she does, she does loads of ellipses as well where you don't need them. And I get like, using them sometimes is good, but five in a page is far too many. She needs to like, just work on that in my opinion. Maybe it gets better throughout the series, I don't know. I said the world is cool as well, which I think it is. I think the the actual world sounds really cool. Although I had a weird, um, like when I was looking at the map, I was a bit confused because the map of this is literally the UK and Ireland. Like, where is it? That, that is the UK and that is Ireland. So I was a bit confused because the author's American. I didn't really know why. I did a bit of research and I think I found out that like the place that it's called is like a take on an old, what was it? It was either Welsh or Irish, correct me if I'm wrong, like way that they said something to do with the UK. So I don't really know what's going on there, but I guess it's cool that she's kind of taking use of the UK. But overall, like it's pretty cool. It's a fantasy. They're in this world that's split into courts and they have fairies who are like, immortal beings i might have got that wrong anyway they have fairies and all of the humans are like split into this tiny little bit on the other side of a wall and they're all terrified of the fairies but one day um this main character favor she does something wrong and tamlin comes and takes her to his court which is the spring court and when she's there lots of stuff happens and then at the end she like gets taken by this like higher fairy like one of the most powerful people and she has to like do some i wouldn't call them challenges kind of think of the hunger games she did some hunger games type stuff there but yeah the um fantasy element of this and the adventure action bit is really cool i liked it a lot actually and i think the characters could get good like if they had some development like some of the characters could be kind of cool i can't lie i'm so excited to see um Rysand? Rysand? <sighs> There's been such a debate online on how to say his name. I'm going to go with... Right... I'm going to say right sound. I'm going to say right sound. Right sound? Oh, I don't even know. Anyway, him. I'm excited to see how their romance goes because I've seen so many spoilers, I know that they get together. So I want to see how that happens and what happens. What else did I say? I said I liked Lucian, he's kind of a side character and I want to see more of him because I think he could be... I liked his like vibe, who's kind of like sarcastic, like a bit annoying, but I liked him. I said the end was the best because there's more characters, you meet new people and there's loads of action which I actually really liked. I said it might be a bit concerning because the bit that, that I liked the most, the ending, was where she was getting a bit of torturing. Um, I am excited to read the next one and it was actually quite good.
so next this is my first february book i read good morning midnight by this is like um ryson from the last book by jean reese rice sorry if i said her name wrong i definitely did um but anyway good morning midnight so this is short i think it's about 150 pages long and it's set in 1930s paris and there's basically this lonely woman who live, is living in cheap hotel rooms and she goes between them and it's just about her daily life like um she goes around lots of cafes and restaurants in the past there was like a tragedy in her family and she's trying not to dwell on that and she's kind of like built up a wall around herself she's like not relying on kindness or anything anymore um so it's basically just about this like sad kind of like lonely woman's life around Paris and I think I like the way that it shows how Paris might not always be what it's cracked up to be I mean in, I know it's 1930s so it's not like as big as it is now I like that and there were some good quotes in here I think I know I highlighted a few I like this one it says did I say all of this of course I didn't I didn't even think it so if before that it went on a little like her thinking everything and then it says that and I actually thought that was quite cool like showing how we like discount what we're gonna say or we don't have the courage to say things and i like some of those quotes it didn't have chapters which i found odd it's a short book so i don't think it needed the chapters it's split into five parts i believe so i think that does it enough but if you want to like get some like meaningful quotes about like life some of these are really really beautiful and really i would say like influential i really like them however I kind of didn't know what was going on the whole time. It was kind of like a blur. Everything merged into one because it's quite monotonous. So I didn't really get like a certain sense of like what was happening each time. It was kind of just flat line. And there were also bits in French, which be which is good because it's set in Paris and you want to like be a bit more authentic. But I cannot speak French and I had no idea what the hell they were saying. So maybe that didn't help. And I said it does a good job of representing what I imagine desperation, grief and long periods of boredom to feel like. I haven't experienced that myself, but I thought it did a good job of what I think it would feel like. Um, because it really did like delve into like that deeper emotional sense that some people get. I think she also had like such an uncanny eye for detail. She was observing and recording like the smallest details that happened in this woman's life. And I think, again, like I said with um, something else, maybe i haven't said it but i like how it shows like the simplicities of life and kind of like blows it up to be like huge yeah she really manages to encapsulate the atmosphere of all the hotels and cafes around paris she gets them she gets you like there you are properly transported to what it would feel like to be there in 1930s paris i read a bit of the afterward i didn't read it all but I think I did learn more about the book from the afterward than actually reading the book. So maybe that says something. The afterward was really well written, actually, um, by A.L. Kennedy. So if, if you read this and you kind of have no idea what's going on like me, read that. It makes a lot of sense of it. And I think you can appreciate it a lot more. Hi. Hello. Next, I read Masters of Death. This is still in February, I think. Firstly, if you want to hear more about this book, then check out our s first video again because we talk about this because this is one of my and Ellis's favourite books again. We both really like it. Um, so I want to read it 4.5. I don't know what I just said. I mean, I would rate it 3. Point <sighs> so I rated this 4.5 stars. My favourite thing about this book is the characters. It was honestly... They were so good. They had such a good vibe and connection with each other. And basically this book centers around these like misfits of people. They're kind of like monsters as well. So you have a vampire in there, um, you have a ghost and you have like demon, son of grandson of death. You have like godson, sorry. You have like so many different types of people. And I think it makes for a really interesting like character lineup because it's not just like humans, like there's so much, like interesting features about all of them that like different it's a fantasy book sorry one second again for the art i just love all of their mannerisms and personalities i said i wish that there had been more more interactions between fox and death fox is the godson of death and he's my favorite i wish there'd been more interactions between them because they were i just love seeing their dynamic it's not a typical like 
father-son type of dynamic it's like they don't take each other seriously and they have like a, a really fun relationship um which i really like but as well as like all the banter between the characters and like the unserious bits there's some really beautiful like romance scenes like flashbacks to when um brant and fox were together um when they had like less cares and they didn't have as many worries it was just some of those bits were really really beautiful seeing like their tender moments together they were really nice i said i got slightly confused in the middle because they're playing this immortal game but it doesn't really explain what's going on or like what the aim is so i did get a bit confused there however i liked working out who everyone was in the foreshadowing sections because there is a lot of foreshadowing in this book and you can go back and figure out what they're talking about later on, which is super cool. It's like a little mystery. The interlude chapters are some of my favourites. They're just in between normal chapters, but they're like, they're quite unexplained. Um, that's where a lot of the flashbacks happen as well. Um, and I really like them. Lots of the time they were really like interesting, sweet. Like it's not present, so it was like far more ambiguous and like your curiosity gets spiked there i said the ending was perfect because it was so so good it wasn't like a, like just like a traditional ending but it was perfect it was so good all the couples in it are just so good with each other they're all really sweet and they're all just such like good pairings they're so nice i love all the couples and i just put a quote at the end of my review and it says and i would love him in every world if he asked and i think that just kind of sums up the book like it's just great watch our other video if you want it's really good <sighs> okay white knights this was read finished on the 29th obviously it is insanely short and it's so cute and tiny like look at it here's it compared to masters of death it's oh, wrong way look at it and also can i just say quickly the quality of this is amazing like the pages are so thick and i love that it's a little penguin classic and you can collect these for like i think it's like over 120 classics i would love to have the collection anyway basically it's a short story published in 1848 it's set in st petersburg and it's like a young man who's kind of like restless he doesn't have that much to do but he's like kind of like roaming the streets and he comes across this woman who is waiting she is completely waiting for this man who she had to leave but is in love with and she they develop such a beautiful friendship together they meet practically every day and they tell each other bits about their lives that are just like it's so pure but it also delves into like the torment and the guilt of like unrequited love because this man is in love with this woman and there's a moment in it where you think they're gonna get together only to find out that it can't be because she is in love with someone else and i think that's really beautiful however it did take me a bit to get through it i don't know what it was this is my first book by this author i think he's a famous russian author sorry if i'm wrong but i did get a bit i wouldn't say lost maybe lost but i did really really like how it was like an alienation from the world that brought them together and they found a certain certain solace in each other which i just thought was really really nice <sighs> oh ellis i'm so sorry they have such short conversations each day but they find such momentary like solace and joy in one another's company and it's those moments are so beautiful you have some there's some really really good quotes in this and some that will linger however I also think it does the idea of like not being able to have what you want all the time really well and like that idea of like not being able to be with someone that you love and i think it does that really really well so overall it's a pretty good short story novella it's it does a lot in this tiny volume it speaks very loud i gave it four stars so pretty good the housemaid secret this book i gave it four stars probably could have given it 3.5 but i'm being generous as i said in my review on goodreads it does it's nothing spectacular but it's just it's really good at the job it's meant to do which is just like to be an easy crime an easy thriller thing that will get you reading it quick i did read it quick hooks you really well and basically it's just easy it'll get you out of a slump um it's good to use as a break between other books it's fast paced, it's low effort, it's just easy. There's 
The characters aren't my favourite. I found Millie, the main character, she was far more, more annoying than the first one. But then again, I'm not reading it for the characterization or the world building. I'm just reading it for like the quick mystery element of it. And I did love how it switched between the perspectives, like the last one. So I haven't actually explained what it is. Basically, um, so this woman, Millie, um, in the first one, we get to know her. But um, she goes around helping women who are in like abusive situations with their husbands. And in this one, she finds herself hired by this guy called Douglas Garrick as a housekeeper. She does cooking and stuff. And they're really rich. They live in a nice penthouse. But um, she has never met his wife and every time she tries to interact with the wife or give like talks to Douglas about her, he's just like, oh, she's ill. And whenever she tries to knock on the door, she's like, don't come in. Um, once she saw her eye in the doorway and she looked really ill. So Millie goes on a mission. She thinks it's not as it seems. So she goes on a little task to try and help this woman because she thinks that she's being abused by her husband. But as with the last one, there's lots of twists and turns. It's not as it seems. Um, and there's far more to it than what may come across at the first read. So I love how it starts with Millie's perspective and then it switches to the other side and you see a different character's perspective and it tells you like a completely kind of different story. I really do like that. They are engaging stories and they're quick and easy and I really liked it. Um, so yeah. Oh, I got a text. Final book. Where the hell is it? Guys, I didn't bring it upstairs and I'm not going downstairs to get it. Um, it is Verity. You can see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Oh god, my iPad screen is horrendous. Ignore the fingerprints. <sighs> Verity. It's Colleen Hoover, guys. Um, not much else to say, can't lie. Me and Alice both read Colleen Hoover for our recent video. It's the last one we posted, so if you want to know about it, check it out. We go so in-depth. We talk about every inch of this book, so I'm not going to go over it too much here because you'll get bored. Basically, all in all, it's unbelievable. Like, not unbelievable, like, woo -hoo. Like, unbelievable, like, unbelievable. The mystery element was surprisingly good. I enjoyed that. I liked the actual plot. It could be very good, as we said if written by someone else. Someone else could do this so well, just not her. I wanted to keep reading to get the answers and I was genuinely scared at one point. Um, however, which is a big however, they were all horny and they were all giving psychopath. And the fact she didn't read it quicker was odd. If you're trapped in a house of murder murderers, you would read it quicker. No one is obsessed with Jeremy even though he's married. The triggers, insane. Read the triggers, it's crazy. Um, and then, Go through some highlights here. Oh, actually, no. I don't want to say some of these. Um, but anyway, um, I like the ambiguous ending. It was actually done quite well. Um, I like the idea of being able to make up your mind as a reader. But yeah, don't read. Or if you're horny or you like crazy characters and cheating relationships, then do read. Guys, this is Colin, by the way. He is a chameleon, just in case you've seen him in the frame. Um, anyway, so just thought I'd quickly say what I am reading now is In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. I said in the first video I wanted to read it and I have started it. Um, already got a few tabs in there. Um, but I am loving this book so far. I think it's going to be in one of my favourites. It's set in the Second World War. Oh god, it's set in the first world war, sorry. First world war, 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 war. First world war, 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 war. war. For, why am I saying war like that? It's set in the First World War with these two men called Henry uh, Henry Gaunt and Sidney Elwood. We only really know them as Gaunt and Elwood. They are in love. However, they both are like dwindling on this fact. They're not acknowledging this fact that they're in love very well. Um, I think Gaunt is like afraid of what it means to be in love with a man. He obviously back then it wasn't as good, like not as good, but like as accepted um, to be gay. But Elwood on the other hand he's acknowledging this and he doesn't like care as much but he's he doesn't want to ruin his friendship with Gaunt over this because he genuinely loves him so much and he wants to be able to keep his friendship if Gaunt won't be up for anything more but the characters in this are they're so I just love it again it kind of gives me um Song of Achilles vibes 
mixed with like a bit of the characters of Masters of Death, obviously not the fantasy element, it's like a historical fiction, but I just think it brings such a different take on the war. Obviously like in other books you just see it from like the point of view of like a soldier or like just the hardships, but this is like a romance in the war and it's like a forbidden romance as well, which I just think it's done so well. It's written so, so well, and I really like it so far. I would say I'm less than 50% through, um, but at the moment they have, they are in the war zone and they are, it's like them finding brief moments of comfort together in between all the massive fighting and like the horrors that they're seeing. They're able to find like these moments of just like joy um, together. However, they're all tinged with a bit of like, regret and sadness because they know either it's going to end they'll both die or even after the war if they survive they probably won't be able to be together and um elwood is like destined to marry gaunt's sister maud so it's kind of like they just think it won't work out which kind of makes it even more like beautiful if not sad because we know that the whole time they're just thinking this can't last it's done so so well and it's such a like a fresh breath of air to see something about the war that isn't overly the war if that makes sense they just have such good moments together um they have some banter they have some laughs but they're also just sweet and kind and yeah i really really like it and i'm excited to see how it goes um i forgot to say now ellis hi if you're new here i'm ellis today i'm going to be talking about all the books i've read so far this year so that's from january to march because i am still in sixth form full time so it's like I don't have that much time to be reading, but I've still read 10 books, 9 books, which I'll be talking about today. The first book that I read this year is Bear Town by Frederick Backman, and I gave this 5 stars. It's kind of a literary fiction book that's set in this small town in Sweden, and I did talk about this more in our favourites video that we posted a couple of weeks ago, if you want to go check that out. And you essentially follow like every person in this small town, and all the characters are so vivid. It feels like you're watching like a TV show, or like you've known all these people personally by the end of it, because characterization is so well done and the plot is so interesting it's like the flow of the story is just so beautifully crafted i was intrigued for like the whole time like right before this the last book i read was song of achilles which is an incredibly high bar to pass can i just say but this book made me cry multiple times it's just it's easily one of my favorite books of all time definitely top five i've recommended it to my mum and she also liked it uh to another friend and they also really enjoyed it i feel like this can just be for everyone i think one warning is i'd say to check the trigger warnings on this one just in case that's anything you're worried about but yeah other than that solid book would recommend <laughs> i want to the next thing i read this year was us against you which is the sequel to bear town and whilst i didn't enjoy it as much as the first one i still think four and a half stars like I've, i ran it up to five on goodreads because it was really good i'd say the first half of this one is kind of like not that engaging it was still good i still adored it because i love the characters from the first one this series i do not want children but it made me want to have them just so i can name my first one benji like if there's any like benji fans in the comments please let me know i need to like talk about him with someone because i don't have anyone at the moment i need to convince daisy to read it but they haven't yet so i counted whilst i was reading this how many times i cried and it racked up to nine i think which says a lot but the second half of this book is is beautiful it's it's so good it's a trilogy so there is another book in the series that i haven't read yet but i've heard that apparently there's a lot of repetition like they go over the past events of the books and i noticed it a bit in this one but apparently it's worse in the third one so i'm just waiting a bit to read that i have a quote that i thought i'd read from this one uh, just because i really really liked it and it's like an extended metaphor throughout basically this whole book but it just it works so so well people we love will die and we'll bury our children beneath our most beautiful trees like isn't that just that that just makes me emotional just reading that i also feel like this book was really good for introducing new characters because there's been some series i've read where later down the line they just add in more and more, more and more characters to try and like spice up the series a little bit but this one added more characters but i felt like i was just as connected to them as i was to the characters from the first one which i thought was like actually a pretty incredible feat to have achieved would recommend the whole bear town series even though i haven't read the third one yet but i know what i think happens in the third one and i'm just not looking forward to reading that but I know it'll be good. Next book I finished this year was Vicious by V.E. Schwab and honestly don't even get me started. I This was also talked about in our favourites video that we've posted because this book, I think it's my favourite book. It's like my favourite book I've ever read. I was in a job interview last week, they asked my favourite book, I said this one. It's just stuck with me. Editor Ellis here and Daisy, say hi. Um, I know I'm holding up Vengeful in this clip, it's because I'm an idiot and I forgot to say what Vicious was about um, so I'm just filming it whilst I'm doing Vengeful because that's what I remembered, okay, goodbye. Basically, Vicious, the first book in this series, follows these two guys, Victor Bale and Eli Eber, who were kind of like roommates in college and... Why did I say college? 
Americans are getting to me. They were roommates in university and they found out a way to give themselves superpowers through like science basically. So it's like science fiction but fantasy-ish. Like urban fantasy? I, I, I don't fucking know. Don't quote me on that. But then it flashed forward to the modern day where they're like enemies and want to kill each other and it's just such a good dynamic. It's like my favourite thing ever. I've never like adored characters in the way that I adored the characters in this book and um, I think the writing style I just was just something I really connected to. This book is addictive essentially like I read this in under 24 hours and for the next day after especially I literally couldn't think about anything else. I didn't even feel like a person I was just insane. I was just an insane person who'd read about Victor Villain you know ever and I didn't know how to move on from that and I still haven't. I still think about them like daily like I'm not even kidding. I think this book showed me how much I can love morally grey characters and it just it was not like any other book I'd read before. It was just so interesting and addictive and yeah, I will be rereading this in the future. I want to read everything V.H. Schwab's ever written after just reading that book. Now, a bit of change of pace. The next book I finished this year was The Iliad. Um, I did have a reason for this. I'm doing an EPQ at school, which is like an extended project. I don't even know what it fucking stands for. Basically, you just write a big essay on a topic of your choosing. And because I read Song of Achilles in December, I was like, hey, why don't I do it on Achilles and how he might have been gay and how people thought he might have been gay throughout history. So that is basically what I'm doing my EPQ on. And I thought for that, I'd probably have to read the Iliad. So I actually got the Emily Wilson translation and it was actually pretty good. She has a lot of like translated notes at the start, which I thought were really helpful because it was like really interesting historical context. Stop going on a tangent, stop going on a tangent, stop going on a fucking tangent. This book is actually really heavy. But I'd read Song of Achilles, so I knew like a basic kind of outline of what happens in the Iliad. But I feel like it was just interesting to see it as from like the source text instead of like an interpretation, I guess, even though a translation is an interpretation in itself. I feel like it was quite, it was a lot easier to read than I was expecting. Like obviously there's a load of like confusing names and stuff, but from extracts I've seen from other translations, this one's, I think this is the one I'd recommend because yeah it's just it, I, I felt like i understood everything that was happening and whilst it did feel like a chore sometimes because i was reading it for school and there was just some bits where the battle scenes went on for like 12 pages and it was just like yeah he stabbed his nipple and then he cried a bit and then he died and then he moved on to the next guy and he stabbed his nipple and he cried a bit and he died and then like he got his head and then like his horse kind of ran away and then like he got someone else's head and it just kept going on and on and there was a bit in it as well where it was like if i had like ten thousand tones and a voice that never died um i could never explain the like the true might of the greek army and it just kept going on and on and i was just like why am I here? The ending was terrible and I will not be reading the Odyssey. Compared to other books it's quite it's quite chunky, it's quite a chunky guy and it took me ages to read. I started it in December and it took me until like mid-February so. Next book I finished this year is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab which is the sequel to Vicious and I give this one four stars because whilst I did still really 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 enjoy it because it is set in the same universe and that is my favourite book ever I didn't connect to this one as much because they introduced a new character called Marcella in this one but anyway this is the sequel and the best part about the first book was the dynamic between the two main characters Victor and Eli and this book you just don't really get any of it and I get because of the se the circumstances, I can see why you won't get any of it because basically the ending of the first first book means there's like no chance for interaction between them in the immediate future. So I can understand why it isn't focused, but about, I'd say a good half of this book at least, is focused on this new character called Marcella and her friends. And I just, while she was a girl boss and whilst I did really like it, I just couldn't bring myself to care when I knew that in this same world, there was characters that I already really loved. Bits we did get were amazing. Can I just say? And I still did like this book, but I just felt like if you've created something that is the most interesting part of the first book, why not continue with that in the second one, if that makes sense? Because the people that are reading the second book want more of that. That's why they picked up the second book. The ending of this book, can I just say, whilst Google tells me that there is not going to be a third book, in my head I've already made a way for there to be a third book, should V.E. Schwab choose to take it, like, if she, if she needs any inspiration. They can just hit me up, okay? I'm having the best time. Next book I read this year was a Colleen fucking Hoover book. And whilst it wasn't as terrible as I expected, because my expectations were like below ground, they were like buried six feet under and fucking decaying. Just like the plot of this book actually, but um, it was okay. There were some redeeming bits, which was there was a couple of scenes that did make me laugh, but I think that was just because by the time I was 290 pages in, I was like, what am I even doing here? And then the bits that were like not as terrible as the rest kind of just felt okay. And by comparison, they were really good. So maybe that was it. There wasn't a single like full on smut scene in this book, which was like to my taste because I don't want to be reading Colleen Hoover characters. There was some weird bit 
from when they were 14 though which I didn't appreciate but anyway I digress I actually can't think of anything else that was good about this book I think it had potential the way that plot was developed was really really bad and uninteresting and boring and didn't make any sense and like by the end of the book the central mystery of the book is just still a mystery really really not for me if you want my extended thoughts on that like quotes and different things oh fuck my stack of books falling over if you want my extended thoughts on that as well as stuff on verity then you should check out me and daisy's colleen hoover video the next book i read i don't actually have a physical copy of because i got it on audible anyway the next book i read was called love hate and clickbait by liz someone i want to say but i can't actually remember who it's by I had this on audio and I think I'm very grateful for that because if I had to read the name Tom spelt with a H on every single fucking page I think I would have broken something. The characters in this one were so 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 unlikable for the first bit of the book. I, I didn't think I was gonna like it but I was gonna finish it anyway because it's a gay rom-com. Surely it had to get good at some point. Um, but they did actually grow on me by the end of the book. That like the character development was actually really good. Whilst the fake dating and enemies to lovers aspects of this book were really well done, and I actually did believe them. Unlike a lot of things in most other books, like when they're just kind of like, oh, you said this one mean thing to me like two years ago at the office, and now like I just despise you. It wasn't like that at all. Actually, it was like founded hatred. The plot of this was absolutely ridiculous. And there was this weird thing that one of the main characters had going on where it was kind of like being elitist was a personality trait. Like he'd comment on the other guy's like clothes and where he lived and like, I don't know, it was just a bit odd. I gave it three and a half stars still <laughs> just in saying that because it was enjoyable. So it was still all right, you know, like if you're talking about a fun, stupid time where you can just like not have to think real person thoughts for a bit. Yeah. I'd recommend it. The next one I read was also an audio, it was called They Hate Each Other by another author I can't remember. Maybe this is the problem with all the audiobooks because I just do not remember who things are by but I think maybe that's just a me problem. This was why so like I went into it expecting it to be kind of like predictable and a bit cringe and yes it did live up to my expectations in both those regards. It was it was like sweet I guess and enjoyable but there were some parts where the cringe was like too much like there's a bit i think where you know i'll just i'll just play the clip of the void this guy if someone ever talks dirty to me they'd better incorporate astronomical terms in there <laughs> if they say they're going to heat me up like wr constellation sagittarius until i supernova i'll pledge my body to them for life um but yeah that was could not be dealing with that, it was too much. One thing it did have that was nice was the representation in this book. It's a queer YA novel, like you expect that, but it was just like quite, the representation felt like quite casual, not forced, and I just, I really like One of the main characters has like a trans younger sister called Lily and her dynamic with the main character is just, it's the most adorable thing ever. She was like the best part of the book, I can't lie. Still, I couldn't connect with the writing style. I don't know if it was because it was on audio. I still gave it three stars, I still thought it was quite good, like, by the end, I was like invested. At the start, I was like, mm, I was kind of complaining to Daisy about it. But I think overall, it was pretty forgettable. As the books I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading two. Um, I'll talk about this one first. This one's a poetry collection by a Scottish poet, I believe. And whilst I know absolutely nothing about it apart from my dad got it for me, and I actually have a special dedication, like it's signed for me, which I think is really cool. I'm a bit into, I'm not that far into it at the moment, but it's it's quite good so far. More thoughts on it when I finish it, I guess. Probably in my spring wrap up. Um, something I'm also reading is Babel by R. F. Kwan. I don't know really want to say Babel because last time I said Babel, someone thought I said the Bible. Uh, because I've read the Iliad, they just assumed I was actually reading the fucking Bible, which is um. So I'm gonna call it Babel. Um. But yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this one so far. Basically, it's a book about this boy who goes to uni in Oxford um, and he works as like a languages scholar because this world's magic system, it's like magical realism and the magic system is based on languages. It's quite hard to read compared to most other books I've had. Like it's not, it's not an easy, easy read because I feel like I have to focus quite a lot to read it, but it's just so the world is built so well like everything feels so complex but like well well made again it's just it's just really good writing in my opinion and i love the little footnote she does at the bottom like she does footnotes with extra context um either like deep historical context or just like extra notes within the story and i just love that it just feels so like it just feels so fun and the main character's dynamics with like his fr his close friends are just so nice as well like i love all the side characters and like, i think this is going to be one of my new favorites Yeah, I hope to see you in the next one where I hopefully will have a cat. I have bought the cats for the end. 
So, here they are. Noodle, no! No, but no! Really? Really? Guys, we're not very good at cat content, are we? I promise you, they are very photogenic, actually. My friends can vouch for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video with our little wrap up of the three months that we've had so far this year. If you have read anything good in your first three months of the year, then let us know and we can discuss in the comments again. Follow the Instagram at kitlit in the cockpit and subscribe, please, um, if you haven't done already. And hopefully we'll be back together soon. Yeah.